Hey guys, welcome to uh, Reload with Johnny Ray, my YouTube channel. I'm going to uh, load the uh, Glock 23, 40 caliber SW. Uh, very controversial round. I'll show you how I load it. I'm going to load it on my turn press. Stick around, guys. I'll tell you why everybody's afraid of it, why they don't want to load it, why they will load it. Um, but stick around, guys. It should be interesting. All right, guys, welcome to my show. Uh, like I said in the opening, I'm going to load the 40 s and for a Glock 23. I'm going to use my components here. I'm going to use long shot. I'm going to use 180 grain uh, Hornady bullets, XTPs, and I'm going to use Federal primers. All right, guys, um, we'll go to my load data, 40 s and I'm going to use the Hornady books since I'm using Hornady bullets. 180 grain XTPs. Right here, long shot, 4.8 to 7.5 is max load. I'm going to back this down to about 6.6, six, 6.7. Six, six, Try to shoot for about 1,000 feet per second. Um, I've learned through uh, as many mistakes as I've made to uh, go real light. So I'm going to, like I said, right under that should be 1,000 feet per second. It says 6.4 is 1,000. I'm going to try 6.6, 6.7. Six, 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 All right, guys, let's, uh, let's get to loading. All right, guys, Glock 23, it's clear. Let me show you what the problem is. Um, of course, number one problem, it's a polymer lower. All right, guys. Here's the issue. It's not even so much just with Glocks. It's for supported barrels and unsupported barrels. This is a factory barrel. I'm going to drop a load down. The problem is, it's not fully supported right through here. All right, if you can see this uh, piece of brass, you see it wiggling? There's a little room in there, all right? A supported case is stronger completely around, all right? It's this uh, little uh, negative void right here on the bottom of the barrel. That's uh, when you shoot this, you'll get the Glock bulge, or you get what they call the Glock smile, all right? And the brass blows out right there. What happens in unsupported barrel is if it blows out and blows your brass up, then it'll blow on into your gun and blow your lower up. So that's why you've got to take extreme care when you're loading 40 s and for an unsupported case and a polymer gun, which is what we have. A lot of guys I know will shoot uh, 165 grain or lower bullets and they won't use magnum primers. They use just regular primers and lower than 165 grains, which that's a good idea if, you, uh, if you're worried about this. Um, I've loaded a lot of 40 s and Ws. I don't like loading them for people, but I've loaded a lot of them and I've never had a problem. You've just got to make sure your uh, bullet doesn't set back and develop pressure. And you've got to pick your powders. Okay, uh, I'm going to throw a powder chart up here on the uh, screen in a minute. Uh, and it'll show you, you know, your shotgun and your pistol powders are what we call fast burning powders. And then your rifle powders start slowing down. But I think you got like uh, 130, 140 powders. The first 55, 60 are... Uh, shotgun and uh, pistol powders. Uh, so instead of loading something that's a really, really fast shotgun powder like bullseye or red dot, you want to move down on the scale and get a slow burning shotgun or pistol powder. Of course, all your shotgun and pistol powders are considered fast burning. Your rifles are considered slow burning. But of course, one's got to be faster than the others. So like the long shot, the blue dot is like number 51, long shot is like number 54. Uh, it's way down on the scale. Now when you get into um, slower burning pistol powders, um, you, your acceleration picks up. All right, So you've got to watch that guys, 
especially if you're shooting copper-plated bullets. That's why I like to keep my copper-plated bullets about a thousand feet per second. And if you notice, when I said we was going to load 6667, it was right at a thousand feet per second. Max charge was 7.6, so uh, you know I'm way below max. Now, if I was shoot uh, loading high up on that scale, like 7.5, 7.6 then I would drop down to a regular primer and I would drop down to a 165 grain bullet. I wouldn't load no 180 grain bullet. But today we're loading 180s, we're loading at 6.6, we're using a long shot, which is one of the slower shotgun pistol powders. So I think we're safe. I'm going to stretch my case overall length to 1135, okay, and I'm going to show you how to check that and make sure your barrel, the throw to your barrel, uh, you won't be touching any lands and grooves. Because if you dig that, uh, if you dig, you shove that into your barrel, and it digs into your rifling, all right, it's going to build pressure. So we don't want that. So what happens? People stretch this uh, bullet length to ease up your volume, volume ease up your pressure, and they uh, um, dig it into the rifling of the barrel, and it builds pressure. So anyway, I'll show you how to check that. Well, uh, first of all, we will, uh, I've got some uh, 40 brass, I've got a thousand um, range brass I picked up at the range. I'm going to uh, knock the primers and I'm going to make sure it doesn't have the Glock smiles or the Glock bulges in it. So uh, let's get to, uh, let's get to loading. All right guys, I got uh, five pieces of brass. I'm gonna knock the primers with my size and die. Then I'm going to run it through my Glock debulger, which is nothing but a uh, 40 Smith & Wesson factory crimp with the debulger tube ran down and the uh, catch put on top. So, uh, uh, now guys, I just picked this up at the range. I haven't washed it yet. A lot of people will wash your brass first so it doesn't uh, scratch up the inside of their die. And then when their die is scratched up, then it scratches up the inside of the brass. But with pistol, I, uh, I clean this die once every two or three days so it, it doesn't build up that much and where it's a carbide die I don't have to use lube so it's not going to uh, hold a lot in there so I think it'll be alright but guys if you want to wash your brass first fine if you want to deprime and bulge and then wash your brass fine there's no super duper correct order uh, but this is the way I do it uh, there's probably a million ways to skin a cat, guys. This is just the way I do it. So, first comes first. I uh, run it up, deprime uh, de it. The problem with uh, this uh, knocking the primers out is, of course, I use an RCBS uh, seat and die or size and die and decap and die, and I'm using an RSPS um, shell holder. All right, guys, the uh, RSPS calls for the number 27 shell holder. Make sure you use a 27. I know Lee uses a 19 for the 9s and the 40s, but uh, there's less uh, wiggle here, okay, guys? And when there's less wiggle, you're going to get a better size. But what happens is for that size of die, it only comes down and sizes right to the top of your head stamp. Well, you, the bulge might be right below, right in there, and the top of your shell holder might be uh, protecting it from being uh, sized right. So that's why we got a debulge. So anyway, back to debulge or uh, depriming. We're just going to do five on camera, and then I'll throw it in my uh, water tumbler, and I will. Uh, Wash it and dry it, and then we'll uh, we'll get out of the dryer and um, we'll go to loading. There's my five. Now, what I'm going to do here, of course, this uh, bulge buster, it's got a carbide ring in the bottom of that, and all it's going to do is run it all the way around, and, and it runs it all the way up that tube, but it's got to go through that uh, that carbide ring. And so it's going to size the whole case, and it's going to correct that Glock bulge or that Glock smile. Uh, I know other unsupported barrels do this. See how the 
The first one I put in is finally going to pop out. The next one's going to pop out. So it's running all the way up. That's what this catch is for. Okay, guys? That's just going to catch your brass when it pops out. All right, guys, I will size about 100 of these. D-prime, size about 100 of these. Throw them in my uh, water tumbler, and then I'll throw them in my uh, lime and uh, dryer, and then we will uh, deburr, chafe, and prime. So I'll be right back. Okay, I uh, picked my dryer up off the floor so y'all could see it. I've got all kinds of different chambers in here, but here's my 40s. You see, I uh, water tumbled them and dried them, and it got the uh, uh, primer pockets really nice and clean. It's got the inside really nice and clean. So we've got a good product to uh, start with. I'll uh, start with five on camera, and then I'll do the rest. All right, guys, first thing first, I'm going to check the length. Of course, everyone knows straight wall case, uh, pistol, 9s, 40s, 45s, hardly ever grow. But I use this jig here, slide it under where it says 40. You can use a mic um, and measure 0 0.850. But all these are the right length. So, you know, it's always good to check. Just, uh, that's why I like these jigs. You don't have to uh, get your mics out and run them up and down. Sometimes you can lock them in, but anyway. All right, what we're gonna do is uh, my case prep. Guys, if you don't chafe and deburr, then when you run your uh, especially uh, flat-based XTP, flat-based pistol bullets, you're going to crush your shoulders, you're going to wrinkle your shoulders, and then when you go to crimp them, it's going to be real choppy, chop, chop. So just chafe, chamfer and deburr, chafe and deburr, which is real simple. You've got this extra long drag uh, uh, chamfering tool here. And then I've got the deburr, deburr, that's an RCBS, that's a lineman, that's a lineman. It doesn't really matter, but, and I uh, chafe the inside, deburr the outside. <coughs> now this is going to uh, put a really good, uh, it's going to help that flat base bolt start. Real simple. Of course I say that, try to do something on the camera. I'll do five of these. I'll do a bunch off camera. Uh, but right now, just to show you all the point, I don't want to drag this damn video out. I've got all kind of time. Uh, my wife, my ex-wife, my girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend's all pissed at me. So I ain't got nowhere to go. So I guess you guys are stuck with me tonight, rambling on and on and on tonight. But uh, this will make your crimp real smooth it'll make uh seating your bullets real smooth a lot of guys skip this part you can't skip it guys you'll just have problems uh when you go to seating and crimping your bullets now let's uh let's go to uh priming just for the sake of time I put some primers in here. This is an RCBS uh, hand primer. I don't have to use a shell holder. It just goes around the uh, the uh, head case. And uh, a lot of people ask me, how do you know if the uh, uh, primer's in deep enough? Just set it on a flat surface, make sure it's not wobbling, and you're there. This is gravity fed, so just hold it up like that. Set it on a uh, flat surface. There we go, there's five. For the camera. Hell, there's one more primer in there. There's six. One more primer in there. Now your brass is prepped, ready, um, chafed, chamfered, deburred, and primed. So now we're ready to uh, head to uh, out of primers. 
good enough. All right, guys, let's uh, let's get to the uh, uh, bullets. I'm going to uh, use these 180 grain uh, Hornady XTPs. All right, guys, I uh, uh, real quick on this turnip press, I put a bullet feeder die in there. Okay, I made one or two modifications. I just put me an Allen key hole there so I could run it across so I could load it. And I took some, um, hell, I had some packing star foam. And I just cut me uh, a couple cubes here so it stabilized that uh, tube so it wouldn't swing when this turret press spun around. Of course, a progressive press, those were designed for, for they were designed for progressive presses, but they'll work in turrets. Uh, but you know, the progressive press, your shell plate moves, your, your top doesn't. Well, this is going to move, so I just tried to stabilize it. You don't need it. I ran it today for a little bit, and you didn't need it. But that's my little upgrades on my turn press I've done this week. So uh, um, all we got to do now is grab some of these 180 grains and uh, just fill my tube up. This, this tube holds about 22, 23, something like that. The reason I put that Allen key in there is uh, that's a lot of weight uh, to be pounded down. And I just, when I was filling it up, it just seemed like it uh, worked better. It wouldn't, none of them would uh, pop through the uh, fingers of the press. Uh, that you could get two or three extra tubes. But these tubes are hard to interchange. Um, so anyway, I just uh, stabilize this one tube and I just fill it up about every 23, 24 rounds because that's what it holds. Uh, you can run through. I've been running this thing the last three, four days with this bolt feeder on here. And I usually, I could get 200 an hour. And that's with me uh, checking the, uh, ammo uh, chamber checker, checking the size of my brass, checking the uh, case overall length. Uh, so, I mean, you could probably get a little bit more. I don't think it's wise. There you go. It's full. We won't have to fill that up the rest of the video. And uh, I usually just take a loaded one, run it up in there, and then pull my Allen key out and it's ready to go. So, now, I've already prepped my brass, chafed, deburred, put a primer in it. It's ready to go. Now, I, uh, I mark my, guys, the reason, the reason I mark this is because a lot of people come in my shop and they use my presses and they want me to show them how to load. So that's, uh, die one, die two, die three, die four, die five. And if you notice, on die six, I wrote stop on it. That way they'll stop and pull the bullet out. Okay, it's just a little simple reminder, but um, it helps. Um, now, we want to start on one. Before we start, I threw this micrometer setting in here with a pistol drum. Um, I set it at six, 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 seven. We will check that uh, a couple times while we're loading. Make sure it's throwing accurate. Uh, but these micrometer setters and these pistol drums, they uh, they really do the job. So I don't foresee any problems with that moving around. But let's get started. Uh, on your step one, you're going to flare. Guys, it's in the books, it's in the manuals, it's everywhere. You're using a uh, using a 4.400 bullet, okay? Can you see that? 0 0.400. So you want your flare to be 30 thousandths above that so your bullet will uh, stand in there. That's uh, right at 429. So that's pretty damn close. All right. Go to step two. There's powder in that. Now, 6.6, 6.7 of long shot, you can actually get a double charge, guys. 
if you're not paying attention. A lot of times when you get double charges, it spills over the uh, case. It spills out of the case, out the mouth. Not these. These will hold about 13, 14 uh, grain a long shot. So you've got to be careful. And that's why I like this um, die checker, uh, powder die checker. If it comes up to this ring, then you've got the right amount of powder. Now, if it goes above it, you've got too much. If it doesn't come up at all, well, just uh, pour that shit out. See how it didn't come up at all? Then you know you've got a false load, a negative load. Let's go back. Throw a load. Check. Now, should go up, pick up a bullet. Gonna crimp a bullet. Now guys, you don't wanna go below one, one, two, five. I set this at one, one, three, five, one, one, three, six. So we're good, okay guys? What you wanna do, another check, safety check, because if you uh, seat that too low, you're gonna drive your pressure up. After you crimp, take it, tap it two or three times, and then check your uh, length again, one, one, three, six. All right, that's got a good crimp on it. Your bullet's not setting back, so you're not gonna drive your pressure up. Um, while we're sitting here, find your uh, 40 Smith & Wesson chamber checker. It dropped down in that inner circle. So that's gonna chamber in your Glock. I've got an extra uh, uh, chamber checker here too. Um, but they're both made by Lyman, so I'm sure they're both the same size. And I'll tell you another thing you can check too. All right, um, these uh, 40 Smith & Wesson, they, uh, all right guys, these headspace off the mouth of your case, all right? So it's got a, um, that mouth is what's gonna hold that bullet out. Now this is the barrel out of my 40, my Glock 23. Drop it down in there and spin it, okay? If you notice, that's spinning. That uh, the whole cartridge is spinning. That's what you want. If it's not spinning, that means the bullet is sticking too far down and it's digging into your lands and grooves. So you just drop it in, and if it spins freely, you know you don't have uh, the case over all length too, too long. You notice how it fits nice and snug in there. Now I'll tell you something else. This is a barrel out of a 10 millimeter, lone wolf barrel out of a 10 millimeter. Everybody says, I can shoot 40s in my 10s. Well, sure you can, but look how that dropped all the way down because it's head spacing off the mouth of your case, so it's letting it drop all the way down. Guys, I wouldn't recommend anybody shooting 40s in a 10 millimeter gun. I know you can get away with it. It'll fire, it'll detonate, but you've got, two, you've got excessive head space there. It's, uh, it's just not, it's not designed for that, okay guys? So I just skip that. So that checked, they did a barrel check, did a chamber check, did the, uh, we checked the case overall length. Well, we could, uh, let's check the powder thrower, make sure uh, we're throwing the right amount of powder. All right. I zeroed my funnel. I'm just gonna pour this in my funnel. Should be set at six, 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 seven. All right, guys, that's 6.6. Six. That's a good load to me. We'll throw about 10 more, and then we'll check it again. All right, back to loading. Now, I know there's a uh, there's probably an engineer from Lyman, RSBS, Hornady, Lee, out there watching this video and laughing their ass off at my West Virginia, uh, West Virginia, uh, Im Im improvisation, my improvements I made to my little turret press, but hell with it, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do, guys. You gotta try to try, right? Check the, the powder, we just dropped a bullet, 
seat the bullet, crimp the bullet. Now we stop. I'm going to check my crimp. That's good. My case overall length. That's good. My, uh, make sure my bulge, uh, my Glock smile, my Glock bulge is out. That's good. Now, in the real world, I wouldn't check every one of these, but uh, on video, I always check them for you guys so you know that I'm loading. You notice that's not swinging bad. That's uh, loading my bullets pretty good, pretty fast. Like I said, I can get 200 an hour out of this as long as I don't stop and check everything. Of course, I'm getting that because my brass is already primed. But, you know, this is the way it works for me. I load for me. You guys load the way you want to load. I uh, hope this is kind of helping you. One, one, three, five. Chamber checks. Get organized here. We'll knock out a couple more. Step one, step two, step three. I check my powder, drop my bullet, seat my bullet, crimp my leaf factor crimp. One, one, three, five, guys. The secret to keep to getting consistent um, throws on your powder measure, throws on your seating depth, a good crimp. The secret to it is uh, tighten this shit down, guys. Uh, don't be dicking around and just hand tighten it because this is moving around and this is vibrating it. So it's getting little vibrations and it will just turn just a little bit and all that little bit equals uh, thousandths of an inch. So just make sure you tighten that shit down, weld it. That's why, you know, it takes me longer to set up a plate of dies, a turn of dies, um, whether it's two, three rock crushers, whether it's this turnt press, whether it's my lead turnt. It takes me a half an hour to set them up and get them just dead on balls accurate. Okay, that's an industry term and in reloading. You've got industry guidelines, you've got industry terms. That's an industry term, dead on balls accurate. Uh, but it takes me a while to set that up um, then the loading's uh, a piece of cake, guys. Um, of course, I idiot-proof everything, like um, one, two, I, I mark my dies, so if somebody comes in and wants to load, I've got stuff set up, um, and it uh, helps them, because when they build up a rhythm, sometimes, check your powder. There's such a low amount of powder in these, okay, guys? It's really hard to set right here and catch every power uh, powder charge. That's why I really like this um, powder checker die. If you get your flare right, your bullet feeding die will work perfect. There's your Lee, a factor crimp, and there we go, one, one, three, five. I mean, guys, that's just dead on. And I even check my crimp and it should be 422. That's what they've all been coming out. Of course, I'll drop it down in my chamber checker. And it's nice and uh, where it's supposed to be. Of course, you can set your bullets on a uh, flat piece of steel. As long as they don't wobble, you know your primer's set, but we already checked that. We checked the length with that um, Lyman gig, uh, jig. So there you have it guys, um, it just now, it's all downhill. Three, four, five. Guys, I like progressive presses, I like them a lot, but uh, most people want to load with a uh, single stage press, and hell, that's, that's fine with me. Um, most guys only load a couple hundred pistol rounds a month, so they're not blowing through three, four thousand a week. 
So, you know, that's uh, this is all they need. They can set this up for rifle also. I don't like this from rifle as much as I do rock crushers. Um, you know, whenever you got a C design on your press, then you've got a little flex, okay? When you've got this O design, okay, there's less flex, okay? There's less uh, give. So it seems like the tolerances, it just builds more concentric ammo if you deal with an O press or an A frame press versus a C type press. Uh, but with a uh, pistol, you're shooting 15 yards, 20 yards, planking, shooting steel. You know, with steel, a hit's a hit, guys. So, uh, hell, you run your finger down that crimp. Um, if you deburr and chafe really good, you'll get a real nice smooth crimp. Now, you don't want it too smooth because, like I said, it head spaces right off. It holds that uh, cartridge right in the right spot. If you can look down this barrel, I don't know if you can see this or not. Let me try to get some lights and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Down this barrel, there's a little lip right there. That's what the mouth of your, uh, your brass rides on and it head spaces the shell. Uh, so uh, if you run that crimp, if you run that crimp too far in, then it might not, uh, there's, a, there's a possibility it won't catch that. And it won't headspace right. And it'll uh, get down in your rifling and lands in grooves of your barrel and build your pressure up. And 40 Smith & Wesson, guys, you don't want to screw with uh, overpressuring. Uh, plenty of uh, polymer guns have been blown up shooting out of an unsupported barrel because um, of the uh, overpressure. You know, if you have that setback, if you uh, drive that bullet too far deep and you get too much pressure build up in there, you know, if you crimp it too tight, that adds pressure. If this bullet hits the lands and grooves of your barrel, it's going to build pressure. Okay, if you put too much powder, it's going to build pressure. Now, if your brass has the Glock smile, and you, you know, when you size brass, we call it work hardening, all right? Any kind of metal, brass, copper, any kind, when you uh, work it and work it, what you do, you make it brittle. When you make it brittle, it's uh, susceptible to, uh, to cracking, splitting, blowing up. And if you blow the back out of that in an unsupported barrel, all that blowback is going to go down in that polymer and it's going to blow your damn gun up. So visually inspect your brass. Extremely visually inspect your brass. Try not to shoot your brass more than three or four times if you're shooting 10s, 40s, or 357 SIGs. Those are all what they call high pressure rounds anyway. I think your 9s and your 45s shoot about 23, 24, 25,000 PSI. Your 40s, your 10s, your 357s are all above 30,000 PSI. So that's a high pressure round anyway. So you want to uh, uh, stay, you know, uh, use a lot of caution when you're loading these. They're not impossible to load. They're not hard to load. You just got to mind your P's and Q's, guys. You just got to pay attention to what you're doing and make sure you're using quality brass. Um, and I don't care if you pick your brass up at the range or not, just inspect it, all right? That's why it's good to wash it, dry it, and get it real nice and clean so you can see those fine cracks in it. If you can't see those fine cracks, a lot of guys just load dirty brass. Uh, they don't give a shit if it's scratching up the outside of the brass. These guys are uh, high volume shooters. Guys shoot 1,000, 2,000 rounds a weekend at these competitions. So they don't have a lot of time to dick around uh, washing the brass. But what, ha what happens when it's dirty, it hides those little fine hairline fractures. And then when they load on a progressive press, they don't visually inspect. You know, I'm probably picking this brass up five, six, seven times before uh, it's done with the loading process. When I pick it up at the range, when I throw it in the, um, the when I deprime it, when I debulge it, when I chafe it, deburr it, when I prime it, now, when I uh, set it in here and, and do the loading process of flaring it, seating it, uh, powdering it, seating it, crimping it, uh, I, I'm always constantly visually inspecting. And that's, that's the key to safe reload. Of course, I'm not trying to do big numbers. Like I said, I can get 200 an hour out of this uh, if I stay right on it. But probably average, I'd get 100 
850. Uh, I'm not trying to set any records. I don't need the ammo that fast. Uh, plus, if I do need the ammo that fast, I've got a Dillon 650, but I haven't done any videos on it. But I can run them on those if I need it. But I can get a couple of my friends to come in here, and we all, one will prep the brass, one will wash and dry the brass and, and, and sort it, and the other one I'll set the dies up, and we'll... Uh, we'll uh, get at it. So it doesn't take us but a day or two to knock out two or three thousand rounds of nines, forties, or forty-fives, what we basically shoot the most. Um, but let's get back to loading, guys. Uh, I rambled on enough. Uh, shit, it's going to take me three hours to, uh, you'll be getting your social security before I'm done. Checked it. Dropped it. Seated it. Crimped it. 1134. We're right there, guys. 1134, 1135. Like I told you, case overall length in the book said 1125. So we're way, uh, I've built a little room of margin here, and max load was, I think, 771, and I'm at 66 on the powder. Hell, let's check the powder again. Just make sure we're throwing the right amount of powder. Threw a little over there, uh, six eight, but we're still under the recommended seven one. Remember, so I'm good, guys. Uh, that's why I don't load to the max, and I stretch my case overall length a little bit, just in case something like this happens. It's always better to be safe, guys. I promise you that steel target. Unless you're shooting the uh, competition minor and major classes, that target doesn't know if it's going 900 feet per second or 1,000 feet per second or 1,050 feet per second. So don't take any chance of blowing your uh, your gun up, uh, nor less a chance on uh, blinding or knocking off one of your digits, guys. Uh, hell, we only got 10 fingers, two eyes. Uh, I kind of like mine. One, powder. Check the powder. Drop the bullet. Seat the bullet. Crimp the bullet. 1135, guys. I mean, uh, if you get this stuff tight, and not, like I said, hand tight, put a wrench on it, you know, weld that son of a bitch. Um, check. Weld that son of a bitch in there so it doesn't, uh, all this vibration doesn't shake it loose. You're going to be good. That's, a lot of times your powder will dance around. Because, you know, if you just barely move this micrometer uh, setting tool here, then it's going to let out another grain of powder or a little less powder. And uh, with all this moving around, moving around, it's picking up that vibration, and that's why it's moving around a little bit. But still, plus or minus a tenth of a grain is fine. I always build my ammo two or three tenths under uh, max, so I'm good anyway. All right, guys, um, that's... Uh, I can't think of anything else that I should tell you guys um, on loading 40 Smith & Wesson for your Glocks or your polymer guns. Um, shit, that's rougher than two nights in jail right there. That uh, I think it's got a little burr on it. But see, you pick up little things while you're doing this loading process if you're using a turnt press. Like I said, progressive presses with the bullet collets up here and your brass feeders uh, and you're just pulling the handle and it's spinning and kicking it out, it's hard to self-diagnose problems when you don't visually inspect everything, don't put them in your hand. Um, anyway guys, good video tonight. I hope uh, hope you learned something. Uh, if you uh, saw I made any mistakes or the order I did stuff in, if you don't agree with it, uh, just uh, leave me a uh, comment. Um, I'll address it. And if I do something wrong, hell, I'm not perfect. I'll own up to it and tell you, you know, uh, I did something wrong. More likely, though, um, I've got a way of doing things. You've got a way of doing things. I'm not saying my way's right. I'm not saying your way's wrong or your way's right and my way is wrong. Okay, guys, it's as um, long as uh, the ammo functions safely and accurately, uh, I think we're all good. Uh, plus, um, like I've always said, guys, 
I'm not an actor. I'm not a director. I'm not a producer. I'm not a filmmaker. Um, I'm not a screenwriter, okay? When I build a piece of ammo 90% of the time, when I check uh, the case overall length, you know, I'll set my dies up and whatnot, but uh, you see it when I see it, okay? When, uh, after I build ammo, you see it, I see it. Now I'll go ahead and build the, the next hundred of these and knock these out. Uh, you guys make sure you subscribe, like, share. Got any questions, comments, leave them. I'll address them. I appreciate it, guys. You all have a great uh, weekend. Cocksuckers on there think they know everything. That guy was raising hell uh, yesterday about I put that powder dropper die in that turp press. He said, you don't need that. Who, said, who was? Some that guy checker. from South Africa. He watched it from Africa. South Africa. I don't know. Said where. you didn't need it. Said didn't need that powder dropper die. And I said, no, you don't need it if you're just gonna load fifty or hundred. But if you load two or three thousand a week, then it comes in handy. His reply was, Well if you're loading two or three thousand a week, why don't you use a progressive press? Well, I wasn't gonna get on there and argue with somebody on the internet. You know, the keyboard warriors, they're all tough guys on the other side of the computer. Oh, yeah. Just tell that cocksucker to come down here and talk to me and to my face, and I'll tell him why I don't need a progressive press. But it ain't like we don't have progressive presses. It ain't like we can't get one and we can't hook one up. But 99% of people to don't me, have a progressive press. To me, that's better than a progressive press. You know, uh, but now you know, people don't have them. And this yes. is what I everybody wants to learn how to load with. I would rather have another one of these as a progressive press now. After I tell him, that. you know, I, I told him. This thing I goes said, through on Tuesday. We're, we're just going to order one of them rock chuckers, them uh, super chuckers, and hook it up. But okay. uh, it just kills me that well, they, they can't off. believe that we load two, three thousand rounds a week. Now we don't load two, three thousand rounds a week every week, but some weeks we'll load ten thousand rounds, and in, in some months we'll load ten thousand rounds. Uh, tell them, jackasses, to bring their ass down here and watch us or help us. Hey, if you can't help, get the hell out. Harry, I don't want him fucking up the fridge. You're right. He fucked him up enough. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like a monkey trying to screw a football. He does a good it's job. It's not my yeah. fault the thing was fucking junk out of the box. And it took two or three other parts to put on it to make it work. You, Johnny. I know that. You know how people are. There's always somebody thinks they know know it all. And if you, you know, say get up here and do it, yeah, they don't show know them. how to do it. Show them. If you're way, I will tell you, if you're way you way show better. them one of those fucking brands to swear them down that we just bought them out of the pack. Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> and we make a video and show every step that we do and show them right when they come out and they still think something's up. They still think we're lying to them. So bring your lazy ass up here and sit down and watch us or help us. That's right. Or shut the hell up. The way help us. Yeah. Well, I like... They can sit down and watch. I just want to see them say something. They're not going to say face face. Face. They ain't going to say they shit. Kids are too faced. They're, they're liberal snowflake Buttercup, unicorn rides, and cocksuckers. You know, we already got one of them here anyway. Yeah. I was thinking about you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the unicorn riding cocksucker? We already got one of them. I mean, we got two Dillon 650s Please. five minutes from here. Please we can dodge. We use anytime one. Please dodge him. But we do need a Pro Chucker 7. I wanted to get the Pro Chucker 5 because it's about $200 cheaper, but we're just wasting our time. Might as well get the one that's got seven dies instead of five dies. That way if we need to add something, and it just, I, that shit goes through on Tuesday. I got, uh, if it goes through, I'll need you half on it. I know you will. I went off and got my fucking cigarette. I'll fucking die today. Well, at least you'll save our lives. Yeah. Well, hey, you guys make our life more easier, won't it? Yeah. Yeah. He won't be fanning the door as much going outside. You might have to you take a little drink. You might have a little glass you of whiskey. Was never fat boy. Boy. Oh. Yeah. Somebody said something the other day about drinking whiskey while we're loading. 
first of all, if I want to drink a glass of whiskey, I'm a 53-year-old grown-ass man, I'm going to drink a cup of whiskey. But we don't drink it when we're loading. We drink it maybe when we're prepping brass or something. When, when I'm when setting we're up our load by myself, I smoke a cigarette while I'm loading. Well, we ain't that crazy. Yeah, but you know, you yeah. ain't that you had you a damn that suicide uh, uh, wish. Yeah. You uh, ain't that we're smart. not that crazy. <laughs> I've but got some good. Surely, food. God, we can drink a, a a little drink of whiskey if we're uh, knocking primers out of a piece of brass. It ain't like going out to range shooting. I'll tell you nah, something about that. We're not handling weapons. And we're not handling powder and primers and all that all together at the same time. People just want to bitch about, they want to hear themselves talk what they want to hear. They think they know something. They try to act like a preacher. <laughs>